Okay, so it's time for Grandma Reads a Story. And um, this is a uh, joint program with the Foster Grandparents Program of Oakland County, sponsored by Catholic Charities of Southeastern Michigan and the Pontiac Public Library. And I'm so glad to have with us today, Grandma Janet. So take it away, Grandma Janet. Okay, um, there, I do have a, a white um, Zoom notification that says this meeting is being live streamed. And I'm wondering, I should maybe go and, and have that taken off. Yes, I'll, I'll be right back. Oh, no, it's just letting you know that it's live streamed. It's but it, it's um, and, and, and it's on your face. It's got your face yeah. covered. Is oh, that? Okay. It, it, but it won't affect um, the live stream. So it's okay. okay. All right. All right. My book today is How to Babysit a Grandma. And this is by Jean Reagan and illustrated by Lee Wildish. And this kind of shows uh, a little preview of, of uh, the little girl visiting her grandma and all the things that they did and so forth. Okay, now we have um, the mother and dad. Here's the mother and dad and here's the little girl and they're on their way to their grandmother's house. And it shows here that that's it. That's, that's their grandmother's house. She lives way out there in the country. My grandma used to live in the country too. When you babysit a grandma, if you're lucky, it's a sleepover at her house. Mm, fun. What should you do when you get to her door? Put on a disguise and say, guess who? Like, like she's trying to imitate an owl. Knock with the secret knock, only she knows. Tap, tap, tapity tap. If you like cats, meow. If you like dogs, bark. If you like goldfish, hum. So uh, this little girl evidently likes dogs better because she's got a bone right here. And, and now she's showing how they beg and so forth. And here's her little dog. When she opens the door, shout, Grandma, your babysitter is here. <laughs> Hug your mom and dad goodbye and say, don't be sad, I'll be home soon. <laughs> now tell your grandma all the fun things you have planned. How to keep a grandma busy. Go to the park, bake snickerdoodles, have a costume parade, go to the park to feed the ducks, do yoga, look at family pictures, go to the park to swing, play hide and seek, make goofy hats, go to the park to slide, have a dancing puppet show, read stacks of books, go to the park to take photos, <laughs> do puzzles, play cards. So she's got a, a huge agenda there. As a babysitter, you need to let her choose. Of course, she'll want to. She wants to. Go to the park. <laughs> what to do at the park? Slide down the bumpy slide and the twirly slide. If she's feeling brave, try the tallest slide of all. Push your grandma on the swing, but not too high. Remind her to pump her legs. Feed the ducks. Show her how to help the shy ones get some food. Don't forget, good babysitters always say, five more minutes before it's time to go. <laughs> the 
back at home, plan some fun. How to play with a grandma. Grab the microphones and sing a duet. You might want to try You Are My Sunshine or Happy Birthday or make up a new song together. Line up all her shoes to play shoe shop. If your grandma likes fancy things, decorate her with ribbons, bows, and stickers. Shout, ta-da, when you hand her a mirror. Soon it's time for dinner. Your grandma may be a yummy cook, but shares your tricks to make everything taste even yummier. Add sprinkles to anything. Well, almost anything. Arrange the food to make silly faces. Shut your eyes as you take each bite and say, mmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds like fun. Uh-huh. When it starts to get dark, take your grandma outside to find the first star. Star right here. Back inside, snuggle up and read some books. Turn the pages slowly so she can find everything in the pictures. Ask your grandma for stories about when your mom was little. What was mom's favorite thing to do at the park? Did she ever get in trouble? Was her grandma as fun as you? Teach her how to say, I love you, without making a sound. And uh, so it says, point to your eye here, to your heart, and to her. Now let your grandma choose where she wants to sleep. Places to sleep, in a tent. I've never seen a tent like that. Uh, so maybe they do have tents that, that are all bunched up together, but I've never seen one. But anyway, that, that's one idea, a place to sleep. Nobody can bother her or on the floor. See, she's rolled up her grandma in a rug. Yeah. On the couch, in the little bed, in the big bed. If she asks, should we leave the night light on, the hall light on, the door open? Answer, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> she's very considerate to grandma. Uh-huh. Once you're both tucked in, make shadow puppets. Have your shadow foxes, foxes kiss goodnight. Shadow foxes. If she's missing your mom and dad, tell her they'll be here tomorrow, bright and early. In the morning, when you hear a knock, open the door. Dressed up as, mm. yeah, she's dressed up like grandma here. <laughs> yeah. After you're all packed up comes the hardest part, goodbye time. How to say goodbye to a grandma. Let her borrow some sprinkles, some books, some stickers, some ribbons. Say, I love you without making a sound. Wow. Give her a big hug and ask, when will I babysit you again? <laughs> oh. when, 
when can I babysit you again? So the little girl said she's babysat her grandma, not her grandma babysitting her. So she's, she's a nice little girl. She's tried to make her visit a happy one for her grandma. Yeah. So anyway, these are, are some other pictures <laughs> that show. I think the those are excellent ideas on how to babysit your grandma. <laughs> yep, Here's, they're here. Uh, she's teaching her grandma to dance here. Oh. And then um, she's lined up the food in kind of a, a cute way. And even gotten her, her grandma to go down on the slide. <laughs> That's something my grandma never would have done, I don't think. So anyway, that's that's it for that oh, particular that book. Great book. What is there parts that you like uh, in particular, Grandma Janet? <laughs> in that book? I don't know. I just I just like the way uh, the little girl showed her love and and uh, respect and appreciation to her grandma and she wanted her grandma to enjoy the visit that the little girl was was doing not thinking of not being concerned that much about what her the little girl wanted to do but how to how to make the grandma's life happy for that day i like the part about well if she's missing if she's missing her children you can just to her daughter, you can just say, oh, she'll be here bright early tomorrow. I like that, that she was concerned about how she was feeling and maybe missing them. Uh -huh. and I thought that was just really neat that she was um, that considerate of her feelings. So it's really neat to have, because you usually think the other way around. So to be considerate of the kids. So that's cool, yeah. So, um, anybody out there that's watching could write a, um, put a comment. What is your favorite part of, did you ever babysit your grandma? And what is your favorite part of babysitting your grandma? <laughs> In our comments, I'd love to hear, so I'd love to hear a comment. So, um, what, um, what was our second book? Okay. Our second book is, is by Bakari Sell, New York Times bestselling author of My Vanishing Country. And uh, the title of the book is, Who Are Your People? It was written by Bakari Sellers and illustrated by Reggie Brown. Okay, so um, dad and, and the two kids have gone to Remembrance Park to, to, um, to celebrate their, their ancestry. When you meet someone for the first time, they might ask, who are your people and where are you from? Who are your people? So they're pointing out what their ancestors might have looked like. Maybe this is as uh, their mother, grandma and grandpa, and uh, maybe the great grandma and, and great granddad. You should always be proud of who you are. Your people were strong and smart. They dreamed of things not yet seen and imagined that we could all be free. Your people were fighters. When they were told they had to leave because of the color of their skin, they sat down. It shows them at a, a restaurant here.
your people were mighty activists, champions that struggled for justice and equality. They marched so that people would, would know your life matters. Okay, so here we have the NAACP, and then we have a sign, we demand equal rights now. And uh, maybe many of you have, have uh, seen some of the demonstrations like this. No justice, no peace. We are all one. I am a man, love will win. Justice for all, vote. We shall win by love, social equality. I am a man. So you may have seen some of these demonstrations on TV. Yeah. And they stood up and ran to make history and change lives. So we've got vote Obama, hope, hope, hope. Your people were trailblazers who changed laws and broke records. Today we stand on their shoulders. When they ask you, where are you from? You are from a land where the soil is dark and matches the riches of your skin where cotton and sugar cane were strongly rooted and match your strength and determination. You are free. You are from the country where time moves with ease and where kindness is cherished. We say a simple hello to our neighbors to let them know we see them. Hmm. Nice idea, say hello to your neighbors. So you know mm -hmm. we see them, I like that. You are from a place where the aromas of cakes and pies walk from the windowsills to fill your bellies with goodness and your hearts with love. Yes. And you can see they, they, they like uh, greens. And here they've got pie, they've got cornbread, mm -hmm. all kinds of good food. Yeah. Looks like even candy here. So they had a really nice picnic and celebration. Yeah. I love cornbread. Collard greens are good. You are a product of a proverb that takes a village to raise a child. All that music. Yay. You are from a place filled with love and hope and expectation where people rooted for you to succeed. Today we stand on their shoulders. Hmm. Pretty cool. On their shoulders, you are so strong and so loved. On their shoulders, you can reach for the sky. Reach for the sky. Love that. So, so what will you do? What, so what will you dream? And how will you change the world?
wow, those are great questions. So uh -huh. if you're watching so this video, that. please please add a comment. What what will you dream? What will you do to change the world? Love to have a comment on the website on Facebook. That would be great. So which book did you like the best, Grandma Janet? I like the How to Babysit a Grandma. I like that the best, but the other one is very good also. So they're both good books. So is there something that strikes you as the same in both of them? Uh, no, I can't really see. Do you? Can you see something that's the same in that? Well, both of them, they're concerned about uh, people and counting and people being of value. One is that grandma counted, uh, grandma was valued, um, her feelings were uh, valued, and the one, um, where are you from, um, did the same thing. You know, they, they stood up for everybody um, having rights and for um, getting what they need and stand up for themselves. So, yes, that's, that's very good. And both of them are a very, have a very positive, encouraging, supportive uh, feel to them. Either one of them is, um, was, things can be negative, it can be discouraging, or things can be um, critical, and either one of them is, to me, they're both very, very supportive and encouraging and reaching, reaching, you know, mm -hmm. reaching for this, this, this better life or the better stars or the better, the better part of human nature. Well, just uh, just knowing that that uh, they they should not only love others but love themselves, appreciate where they were from, where their ancestors were from, and and oh. the um, the ideals that that uh, were passed on, so that they could teach their children those ideals. Well, that's a really good point. I hadn't really thought of it, but the first one was about grandma. And they mm -hmm. said, where are you from? So that is also talking about another generation, previous generation, where you were from. So yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Good point. Yep, it, it just shows them uh, just be brave, lo love, love. There's nothing wrong with loving yourself. And to thine own, like the saying, to thine own self be true. Mm -hmm. And to pass this on to other people. Well, that's great. So thank you so much for reading those two stories. Oh, and, you're welcome. So and we will be back next week uh, for Grandma Reese's story at 3.30. And um, the Easter Bunny is going to be hopping into the Pontiac Public Library on April 9th. So um, there's going to be uh, things, games to, uh, things to do with games and going to have Easter Bunny, so hope. Uh, oh, real uh, rabbits? Are they going to be real rabbits? That's that Easter Bunny. <laughs> so that'd be a big Easter Bunny. So, oh, okay. So be yeah, yeah. I love rabbits. I would love to have a rabbit. That's a good idea. Maybe sometime. But those are you know little rabbits. They're like little things, <laughs> and they would be happy. That would be fun. Maybe sometime we will have real rabbits in the library. That would be a fun idea. But this, yeah, is the, this is the spring bunny. So, yeah, he's going to be hopping into the Hunting Public Library on April 9th. So, yeah. So, we're going to play, I'm um, going to get some, have some neat little things for the kids. And um, they're going to be playing in games. And so, Hope to join us um, um, April 9th at two o'clock. So thank you so much, Grandma Janet. And okay, you're welcome. We'll be seeing you. Goodbye. Okay, enjoy.